Banerjee, we, could you give us the latest with what's happening in Leicester at the moment? Because that will give us a bit of background about the trend that's been happening with the fake news propaganda. Wonderful place to start. So I've been speaking again to a few of our friends and family connections in Leicester. And a couple of things uh, I can report which are consistent. Firstly, there has been no further violence. There doesn't appear to have been any other incidents. The members of the Hindu community are continuing to be tranquil and um, reserved and following the instructions from the police. And so hopefully we're seeing this settle down. The second thing that uh, I can also share is that as the police investigations continue, information is coming out and the information that's coming out really is indicative of what I think is a very disturbing trend. And we can explore that as we talk about the specific instances. The one bit of breaking news is that there was a report a while ago um, and it was tweeted by a number of very prominent um, Muslim activists in Leicester and it was published on I think the Five Pillars newspaper yeah. and it alleged that um, some Hindu lads had jumped out of a car and attempted to kidnap a, a young girl from outside of a school. Yeah. And obviously that's an incendiary piece of information for something so sensitive any mainstream publication or journalist or reporter would have explored the evidence. And the police have been emphasizing, please don't make any reports without having substantiated the evidence. Now that the investigation has been conducted, the police have issued a statement today. The crux of that statement is that this incident did not happen. Okay, So they've interviewed the young lady, they've interviewed the school, and... Um, had a look at CCTV footage and everything else. And the report from the um, assistant commissioner, I think it is, in Leicester, Rob Nixon, is that this incident never took place. Now, that's a, an extraordinary development. You know, it wasn't as though there was a misunderstanding. It wasn't as though there was an uh, attempted um, assault or a molestation. The incident just didn't take place at all. And that could have been very easily established. Yes. Now, the... Well, it gets even worse because the, the people who actually proliferated this on social media have also tweeted that they too have, after the event, conducted their own investigations. They visited the location, tried to contact the family, etc., etc., etc. And so there's no evidence at all. And then it's quite uh, strange that at the end of their social media tweets, they would then say how terrible it is to make these things up and that one shouldn't. Um, engage in false allegations, which is, let's say, the, it's like uh, um, uh, closing the stable door after the horse has bolted when you're the person who opened the door and released the horse in the first place. Yes. And so there is a, a very serious issue there. That's I not the I, only... Mm, I, please. I, I was just going to ask Khalidji with his legal experience, surely that would be a waste of police time, um, these false allegations. Is that something that the police could then press charges against? Yeah, I mean, raising files, false allegation is a very, very, very serious, uh, very serious crime. And, and uh, if somebody, uh, after the police investigation is found to have uh, leveled false charges, then surely um, um, you, you, first of all, you can write to the police that, well, are they ready to prosecute the person? And if not, then a private prosecution can be brought about under such mm. circumstances. Mm. This is really, really serious. Well, uh, I... Let me say, uh, this is not a solitary incident and it is not happening for the first time. Um, I'm, I'm reminded of uh, an in similar incident in January, I think 2018 in Canada. Uh, there was an eight, there was a like 11 years old girl in Toronto who said that a stranger has cut off her hijab with scissors while she was on way to school, and uh, the school administration called police. They they sent an alert on social media. Local media rushed to the school, and there were press conferences. And the girl described the incident in front of a sea of cameras. By afternoon, there was an international. It was an international news story. Even, uh, you know, the prominent politicians across Canada rushed to condemn the incident as an act of hate. 
and uh, even the prime minister said that canada is an open society and uh, you know incidents like this cannot be tolerated blah 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 and uh, a few days uh, later the whole thing crumbled police arrested a uh, released a statement saying that investigation has revealed that the attack did not happen and 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 the the, the nothing happened the girl uh, the, the the family of the girl just issued a sorry statement and that's it so this is this is something it this this is a very uh, kind of i would say a trend uh, yeah. it, it's not something that only to happen in in uh, in leicester this is something to uh, th this is something which which uh, the uh, they 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 play victim card and and um, unfortunately um, muslims in the west are very very uh, or wherever they are in minority they are they are very um, i would say very much prone or, or very much uh, into into playing this 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 uh, victim mm -hmm. card sad mm -hmm. but that's how it is yeah it's uh, just on that no that note it's it's a worry because obviously there are crimes that do occur and the last thing you want is for the police not to have been able to attend because they're engaged in a wild goose chase. And yeah. that it also undermines the credibility of the people who are making these reports. You know, there are real casualties in this incident. This has established that, in fact, there were no Hindutva thugs yeah. who were actually trying to molest a, a Muslim um, underage yeah. uh, a, a minor. Yeah. that there was no rss fascism or anything and all of those things that had been thrown into the air as a result of this none of it was true but there are very real casualties there were a hundred families who were effectively under curfew in their homes who had their doors kicked in and damaged and there is uh, physical damage to property as well there was that poor young man whose photograph was deliberately circulated on social media with a photograph of his vehicle with the registration number. And it turned out that he wasn't even in the country. Just imagine if that poor young man had been in the country. Yes. And his parents suffered the harassment of a mob turning up outside their door, demanding satisfaction and to you know see who this uh, terrible, terrible person was. These are very, very real incidents. And I must say that we've just had a, not so long ago, a case where a veteran, a British veteran who made a post on Facebook, which was deemed to be offensive by some people, the police arrived at his doorstep and arrested him. And here we are speaking of a totally different order of magnitude of criminality. And so it's, uh, let's see what the police do, because uh, if they don't apply the same scale of response, and the same level of concern across all communities, then that's active discrimination. That is a denial of the right to be seen equally in front of the law. And that's a very, very serious issue. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. So, I mean, we're having this issue, as, as Khalid G said, this is becoming a trend because mm. it seems to be more of a trend. So for some reason, since 2014, because in 2015, <laughs> There was a case where, um, going back to India now, so we've had Canada, we've had the UK. In India, there was a case where a nun, um, an elderly nun, had been gang raped, and all the press were very quick to say it was six Hindu men. Oh, yes, that was a terrible case. Mm. Yes, but Golkata Supreme Court later, two years later, had found it was six Bangladeshi Muslim men, but the press were completely muted on that fact. If I can share a little bit more information about Leicester, I've just had a message pop up. Um, we have a wonderful local organisation there called British Hindu Voice, and they have been engaged in supporting the families and uh, literally day and night being in touch with the highest levels of the police authorities there. And they've sent me some more information. And uh, the information that I've just uh, received is that in addition to this allegation with regard to... Um, this young lady who never existed, the kidnapped victim who mm. was a mystery. Um, in addition to that, a video has been circulated purporting to show um, the sacred scriptures being desecrated in Belgrave Road. And further assessment of that seems to have concluded that that too is a completely fake um, video and that the incident never happened. So it's fabricated. Uh, so that too seems to be fabricated at this moment in time. 
Um, I'm, I'm hoping to get independent confirmation of that, but that does seem to be fairly robust uh, and evidenced uh, uh, reporting for us. <laughs> Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyavad. Namaskar.